nicht. This is a true story. I know that. Because it's mine. And I've traveled around the world telling over two million people this exact same story. You know the one, the typical, I was abandoned as a baby by my parents and then given up for adoption. What wasn't so typical was what was about to happen next. I was saved by Joe and Mary Bailey, who are and will always be considered my real parents. Maybe not my blood, but by everything else that means anything to anybody. By the age of 12, I was already over six feet tall. It would eventually allow me to escape the poverty, the drugs, and the hopelessness on the streets of South Central Los Angeles. By playing basketball, what I consider to be the greatest sport on the planet. In time, my wife and I would move to Australia where I became the first foreign import and played for the Hobart Tassie Devils. But after nine knee operations, I finally decided it was Time to retire from the game that I love so much. So I embarked on a new adventure, providing hope and inspiration to those who sometimes need a little guidance in, in finding it. So check this out. Um, when I was about 10 years of age, my father took me to a baseball game. Anybody ever seen baseball before? All right, it's not like cricket where you, you know, stand there all day and play and nobody wins. And that's crazy. <laughs> he looked at him and said, Tommy, don't touch him. <laughs> He's black. <laughs> See, the reason why I'm telling you this is because each and every one of you when you continue to get older and older and older, you're going to run into people who are going to judge you. People are going to say nasty things to you. People are going to look at you and assume things. And the thing that I want to say to each and every one of you, you must believe in yourself. You must look in the mirror every day and say, irrespective of the color of my skin, what school I go to, how tall I am, how short I am, how much hair, how much don't hair I have, you have to believe that you are special and you're worth fighting for. And here comes my father, my father, six foot ten. He was sitting next to me. I was like, yo, dad, you hear what he said to me, man? Go and touch this guy in the head, man. <laughs> so my dad looked at Tommy's father and said, you don't see the goodness in my son, but I do. And one day, you will look at people of color and you won't judge them by the skin color, you will judge them by what's in here. Never give up, never quit, keep fighting. How many people in this room have been picked on before? How many people in this room have been laughed at before? How many people in this room have been criticized before? How many people in this room have felt like quitting, giving up, and just stopping doing what you're doing? Well, let me say something to you right now. On behalf of my father, who told me, as long as you have breath, you have life, don't quit, don't give up. You know why I'm standing here right now? Because last night, because last night, that same man who told me, as long as you have breath, you have life. I saw him at six o'clock. And I said, hey dad, how you doing? He said, I'm okay, son. See, my dad had had his leg amputated. He's got diabetes. At five o'clock, the doctors told him that he'd have to have his other leg amputated. So I went into his room thinking that he was gonna be depressed, down and out, all just mad at the world. But I walked over to him 
and I said, listen, son, it's okay. At 10.45 p.m., August the 7th, my father, Joe Bailey, the strongest man I've ever known, he died of a heart attack. what this is all about. My father's last words to me were, as long as you have breath, you have life. <laughs>